and also having to say Kara and then also having to say Kara Wow, I quite English. <sighs> What is up guys? Welcome to my channel. I am Kate. So for many of you guys that have been with me on this channel know that I have promised a Q&A about a year ago <laughs> when I reached my 100,000 subscribers. So also for those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. I am Kate. Welcome to the family. So I thought I should start off by showing you guys my YouTube vlog because many of you guys have been wanting to see it and I've had it for the longest time. I've had it on display in my room for the longest time but I haven't shown you guys. Only those of you guys that follow me on Instagram will probably have seen it because I showed you guys it. But here it is. Oh my gosh, it reflects. You guys can see <laughs> it's on the upper wall. But yeah, here's my vlog and it says presented to Caitlin Keynes for surpassing 100,000 subscribers. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much to everyone that has subscribed to this channel and that has been supporting me. There's been a few of you guys that have been with me from day one still and I very, very much appreciate you guys' support. It really, really means a lot to me and it really encourages me through some of the tough times of, of doing YouTube. And it's really touching that I have people in my corner that are supporting me. You guys have helped me and encouraged me to be and develop into the content creator that I am and that I'm becoming. And you have given me all the encouragement to do so. I never thought I'd be one of those people with a silver play button. It was always like a far distant dream in the back of my head to possibly do YouTube one day and it happened for me really quickly and really out of the blue. It grew really unexpectedly so I really appreciate you guys for subscribing and liking and commenting and watching my videos sometimes more than once. Guys I really appreciate it. I know the thanks is very long overdue but I just want to say thank you for making an investment in into a little dream of mine that is still growing by the day. So yeah. So guys, without further ado, we are gonna get into the Q&A. You guys have sent me a ton of questions and I still get questions on the regular from you guys on um, both Instagram and on YouTube. So we are gonna be answering them today. If I don't get around to every question, we can always do another Q&A in the future. This is just the first of hopefully many of getting to know each other. Okay, so first of all, my name is Caitlin Cairns. Some people would probably pronounce my surname with a hard R, so Caitlin Cairns. Um, but I'm just so used to saying it so quickly, so Caitlin Cairns, that's how you say my name. Okay, next question. So where am I from? This has been the most asked question, of course, since I have not officially revealed where am I from. Many of you guys know this already if you follow me on Instagram, and some of you guys have guessed it, but I am from Cape Town, South Africa. I was born here, not fully raised here, but yes, I would call this home. So how old am I? So as until now, I am 25 years old. Okay, so what do I do? As in career or in life or whatever. So I am a multimedia designer, but I have mostly been working full-time in social media now, which is full-time practically in YouTube. It takes a lot of work and time to be able to film and put out content that also constantly improve your craft. So that's what I have been doing full time. In all honesty though, I find it very tricky to try to be present on more than one social platform. It can be really difficult to like juggle creating content for different platforms and posting it and keeping up with it and still trying to build your community and connect with your community. So hopefully guys, I'll get better at that soon with time. I feel like I'm still someone easing into the whole social media game because before YouTube, I was not very into the social media thing at all. I'm someone that doesn't really enjoy being on social that much or spending a lot of time on my phone. Hopefully I'll get more into it and ease more into it with content creation on the various platforms so you guys can get more content and more of me. <laughs> Next question, are you an introvert or extrovert? This question also goes hand in hand with what is your MBTI? So I am currently an ISFJ a, and that changed like during the pandemic. Before the pandemic, I was an ESFP. So I'm apparently more introverted now than extroverted, whereas before the pandemic, I was more extroverted and it just makes a lot of sense in how I've just had to grow as an individual in many ways that I have become the personality type that I am now. I should take it again in a few more months because you're apparently supposed to take this every six months to see if your personality has changed or how you've grown. I wonder if it will change but right now I'm still very introverted. I find it hard to just 
reintegrate, get back and get back out there since the pandemic. Do you speak any languages? So I learned French in high school. It was my second language subject in high school, which I found very, very difficult. <laughs> I am still learning it very basically in baby steps, just trying to improve on it daily. I am nowhere close to fluent yet because I'm still relearning the basics. There's a lot of things to help you now with learning the language. And I feel like if I had all the tools and the apps and things back then, I could have been so much better in French and I could have learned it so much faster. I feel like the generation now has such an advantage with having all that access to like, to a, a different apps and software, especially for learning things. I should have a secondary home language, but I didn't get to learn it in school because I've moved around a lot. Like Afrikaans. Afrikaans is like the second language here that you also learn in school. But I didn't really get to learn it in school and I wasn't really raised with it. So I can understand a lot of Afrikaans, but I can't speak a lot of Afrikaans. Okay, so next question. What is your biggest challenge in making content? <laughs> okay, so this is like, this is kind of a challenging question because I feel like Making content is always challenging. I would have to say keeping up with like comments, having to go through like hundreds if not thousands of comments per week. And usually those comments are mostly requests. So having to go through a ton, a ton of requests and then compile lists and see what's best to put out for my general audience. So not being able to appease everyone can feel challenging at times. And then also having to stay current and relevant can also be challenging at times because you end up churning out so much content to almost keep up and then you forget to take like little breaks in between. You don't end up taking like the breaks that you need. I've reached a lot of burnouts already and I am very cautious to now not put myself through so much strain. Okay, so next question. What advice would you give to aspiring content creators? So I would say research the basic steps on how to start a channel and just start. Do whatever you want to do and just keep at it. Eventually, it'll probably turn into something that you would have never probably predicted. So I would say don't overthink it. Don't over research it either. Just get going and you'll learn along the way. You'll really learn a lot of, along the way. I feel like sometimes there's no better way to learn to do something than to just do it and figure it out along the way. Because sometimes like, there's some things that people actually just can't teach you. You're gonna have to just hone in that skills yourself. So I think my best advice, and I think it really worked for me since my channel kind of like happened out of the blue, is just don't overthink it. Get going, do whatever you feel like doing and you will figure it out along the way. Don't over research it, don't listen to too many opinions or too much advice. That can also just sway your path or your authentic like appeal to people. So just like start, Put out that video and just like keep at it, keep consistent. Try different things and like don't lose hope. I'm also speaking to myself at this one. Okay, next question. Did you think what you are doing now would have happened? No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. So when I put out my first video, I was, I was like, oh my gosh, I'll be so lucky if I get like 200 views. <laughs> I, I was like, 200 views will be such an achievement <laughs> because I mean, that's so like 200 people watching if you think about it. But for me, it ended up looking a lot different. Within two weeks, I already had very good growth on my channel and very good results and I could become a YouTube partner. So I really didn't think to even like reach the numbers that I did in that space of time. I thought I'd have to do it for quite a few more years to like um, reach 100,000 subscribers and things like that. But one thing is I gave my first video a go and I saw that it got engagement and I just didn't take it for granted. I just worked at it every week since then and I just stayed really consistent because I felt like, wow, this is an awesome opportunity. I can't take it lightly. I'm going to work at whatever this is and I'm going to run with it. So I really didn't like spend weeks or months or anything like that, even days like planning out my channel and figuring out what it's going to be called and this and that. I just practically said, okay, I'm going to give this video a go. I'm going to edit it and put it up. In hindsight, it was like pretty badly done, but I did it. And I'm glad that I took that risk. Just don't worry about what other people have to say. Okay. Have you felt like giving up? Okay. I got this question more than once from you guys. And yes, many, many, many times. But I am, I like to believe that I'm someone that doesn't like to give up really easily like I will most likely try to push at it and conquer like whatever 
I'm trying to achieve. I also try to understand that my struggles can be building blocks and lessons that can serve me very well in the future. Next question. How do you overcome a creative block? <laughs> in all honesty, I go through all the motions, but usually when I just get started without overthinking it, I tend to overcome it and achieve um, an outcome efficiently when I don't overthink things. Okay, next question. How do you go about filming reactions? The way I do it is, so I usually go through all the comments for the week slash request, then I make a list, then I go and look up which audience it's serving, then I refine the list, and then on the day I want to film, I set up everything, and I have my laptop in front of me, I literally search up like the title that you guys requested on the spot, then I press play and I watch it with you guys on the spot because I hate spoilers. I honestly hate spoilers and I feel like if I'm watching it before the time, it's not a reaction. I don't get the point. I found it very interesting when I started YouTube of when I get like comments of, oh, this is fake and people would be criticizing my reaction and I'd be like, but this is a reaction. What? I don't know what more to give you. Like, I am so sorry, but this is just like my honest reaction in the moment and people can take it or leave it. I was very surprised because I, I went into like reacting very blindly. I was very surprised to see that a lot of people like expect reactions to be previewed and scripted and things like that. I just don't operate that way. I just like to view things with you guys and I just feel like that brings about authenticity and it brings about honesty. And if you interpret as that, then awesome, then amazing, then thank you. But if not, then I guess, I guess my channel or my reaction is just not for you. I'll always choose to be positive towards artists because the artists I react to are not mediocre at all. They're massive voices. And I feel like even if they don't sing some stuff perfectly, like what they're doing is still admirable. Like I wish I could sing half as well as what they could. If you guys request something and I look it up and I press record and I'm not enjoying it and I'm really not enjoying it. And I'm sometimes I can't like, to be honest, I can't always like, it's very, very rare, but I there's been once or twice where I feel like I couldn't finish like the video because I just wasn't into it, I wasn't feeling it and therefore I won't put out that reaction. You guys just won't ever get it. So in a way I do kind of filter it that way. Okay next question, what did you study? I studied a bachelor's in audiovisual design. So many people don't know what that is but it's practically, we practically study all forms of media like graphic design, motion design, um, video animation, all all that, we cover all the basics in all those categories. So there's different avenues that you can definitely go into with audiovisual design. Okay, I've gotten the question, do you sing? Because <laughs> I feel like it's a mystery. I react to a lot of vocalists and a lot of music. And I would be lying to you if I said I don't sing. So yes, I do sing. But I may not be the best at it, even though I may not be the best at it because I really unfortunately don't believe I am I am great in any way I really do love it and I really do enjoy it and I do have a heart and a passion for singing and for music and I guess that's what's coming across to you guys as well but I am definitely I definitely still need a lot of practice with my voice but it's something that I really do enjoy and that comes second nature to me so that probably leads me to that probably leads me to the second question is if I am ever gonna put out any singing content for you guys. I've gotten this a lot. Many of you guys have requested me to do covers or things like that or put out some music. Hopefully, really hopefully, in the near or distant future, hopefully I will get around to putting out that type of content for you guys and hopefully you will be able to see me sing when I eventually feel ready for it and to do that type of content. So hopefully one day I'll put it out. Okay, someone asked a really interesting question. Someone asked, if you could have written one song that someone wrote, what would it be? This is difficult. I really, really start the struggled. I really, really struggled because of course you'd be like, I'd put out a hit single. I'd, I'd, I'd wish I'd written like a Mariah song or Whitney song or something like that. But in all honesty, I thought I'd rather like pick song, a song or songs that I feel like I've most related to in my life. That sometimes, like you know when you listen to a song and you're like, it just really speaks to you. You really relate to the lyrics or the style of the song. So I have about three options that I've really related to. I, in life, I would say Bird's Eye View by Holland. Dear No One by Tori Kelly 
and Growing Pains by Alessio Cara. Okay, who inspired me to sing? So singing has always been something I've loved. Growing up, I really admired like artists like Alicia Keys and Mariah Carey. As I grew up, I also started listening to a lot more worship music. So there's a lot of worship leaders as well that inspired me to sing. So this also leads me to my next question, which is how or when did you get into music or singing? I have always been involved in like the school choir growing up. I was always that kid that would audition for it and be a part of it if I ever got the opportunity. But I think it all really began for me and it all really started for me uh, when I joined the worship team at my church and I became a worship leader and I learned so, so much being a part of it. So having to worship lead, you really need to train your ear and have a good understanding of everything that's happening on platform and beyond. So there's a lot of little things that you train your ear to pick up on and things that you also need to know and have a good foundation in to be able to lead a set and to be able to lead the rest of the team. So I learned a tremendous amount. And that's where I also get a lot of my music and singing knowledge from. I also led a youth creative team and vocal team where I had to train up young people on how to sing or, or how to be a part of team. And there's a lot that I had to teach myself and train myself in so I could teach and lead young people. <laughs> Next question, are you going to be working on music? I'd absolutely love to work on more music in the future when the season is right. But I really enjoy it and I feel like it's an area I can really grow well in. So yes, I would love to work on more music in the future. Okay, so what are my music influences slash favorite artists? So a lot of um, artists that I guess I grew up with, of course, like, or that I really love is Tori Kelly, Alessio Cara, Justin Bieber, and there's a ton, a ton of K-pop that I also really enjoy listening to. Okay, what do you do in your spare time? <laughs> I watch a lot of dramas. I watch a lot of K-dramas. I, of course, love to listen to music. I enjoy reading. I enjoy singing, dance, and most of all, I enjoy spending quality time with family and friends. So that's what I do. I do a lot of that in my spare time. So what is important to you? Okay, so my faith, my family, my friends and my work, <laughs> really important to me. <laughs> Where else have you lived or traveled? So I've lived outside of South Africa and I've lived in Mauritius, I lived in Namibia. And the places I've lived are the places I've traveled to so far. So I definitely would love, love, love to travel and explore more places for sure. Especially the countries that many of you guys are from. So are you a coffee or tea person? So I used to be a uh, a tea only person for many many years for the longest time but recently I started really getting back into coffee and I, I drink I at least drink my coffee every day which is really interesting because I usually would not go a day without drinking green tea okay so cats or dogs okay I would have to say don't okay don't come at me but I would have to say cats because I've only had cats as pets but I am but I am a big animal lover, so I would choose both. I really, really love animals. Okay, and last question. Other things you would like to learn or pick up as a hobby? So this is a really good question because it really made me think a little. I've always wanted to actually like play the ukulele. I always wanted to learn how to play the ukulele. I still need to get around to buying myself a ukulele and learning it. So I'd like to give that a go. I'd also like to get back into playing keyboard because I learned keyboard in like primary school and I never picked up on it again. I think it's, it's an important skill to have to play an instrument when you want to be a musician or an artist in any way. Other hobbies I'd like to pick up is to probably get a bit more active again, like get involved in some sort of classes or sport. So yeah, I guess another hobby would just to be active again. And yeah, I think that is all the questions I have for today. So yeah, guys, thank you so much for asking questions and sending in questions. And if you guys do have 
more questions that I maybe didn't answer would really like to know, maybe leave it in the comments down below and I can somehow answer it for you guys. Maybe another Q&A or I'll just respond in the comments. But yeah, that is me in a nutshell. I don't know if that was interesting for you guys or not, but at least you guys got to know me a little bit better. Lastly, I just want to say I think it's really awesome that I get to do this and connect with so many people from all over the world. I've learned so much about other countries and cultures through this channel. Also being from South Africa, it's just like so awesome to see talent from different countries and how you guys also sometimes represent your country I also tell people over here a lot about what you guys request or what I reacted to and how awesome like some of the artists are I think it's really awesome how I can connect globally with you guys through this but yeah guys there was my Q&A if you guys enjoyed it please make sure to give it a big thumbs up also subscribe if you haven't already and turn on your post notifications so you know when I drop a new video also comment down below of any other content that you guys would like to see of me whether it's a Q&A or other sit down videos um, let me know about yourself in the comment down below as well so we can get to know each other and yeah thank you so so much for watching have the best day further or the best week and i'll see you next time for another video okay bye